For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Psalms 100 and verse 5. It is because of the assurance of the faithfulness of God that I draw inspiration from the words of the hymn writer Francis Ridley Havergal. Another year is dawning, dear Father, let it be, in working or in waiting, another year with Thee. Another year of progress, another year of praise, another year of proving Thy presence all the days. To the people of the Turks and Caicos Islands everywhere, I am forever grateful to God Almighty for His appointment and to you for choosing me to lead at this crucial time. I am delighted to speak to you and the countless others who reside and visit on the cusp of the old and the new year. It's a time to retrospect, to measure performance, course correct, to adjust plans in light of emerging circumstances, to make fresh plans and to set new targets. In doing so, I dedicate anew my efforts through God's help to the collective dreams and aspirations of us all. Secondly, I extend well wishes from my government and my immediate and extended family to you and yours. As with any year, 2023 has had its share of challenges and opportunities, disappointments and successes. But in the end, we have much to celebrate. I am thankful to God Almighty that my government continues to deliver its ambitious mandate to uplift our people. I am especially grateful because our economy is strong, our critical tourism industry continues to grow and outperform many of our competitors. Investor interest has never been better and the pipeline of new development projects has never been deeper, better resourced, or of a higher quality. Although not enough, more and more Turks and Caicos Islanders are entering the tourism industry aided by targeted concessions, including STEM duty rebates, duty exemptions, and MSME grants. Critically, the category of businesses qualifying for grant funding has expanded, and assistance has been rolling out at an increased pace by Invest TCI. You would be pleased to know that additional funding is being made available. Agricultural grants and relief have been made available to qualified farmers, and the fishing industry is targeted for special funding assistance. My government is committed to three principles of justice, equity, equality, and need. And we are walking the talk and delivering for our people's social development. You can see all the interventions made, whether it be in education, in healthcare, social assistance, housing, childcare, or assistance for the elderly and the infirmed. My government is not tone deaf to the cry for relief from the mounting impact of price inflation and has removed duties on food staples and supplies. Permanently reduced CPF, from 7.5% to 5%. Increased the minimum wage and has provided daycare and after-school support to families in need. My government promised to put the service back into public service. And on this, we have not made the strides that we had hoped, but the commitment remains and significant progress is now being made to deliver. More investment has and will continue to be made in reorganizing public service management, providing the strategic tools and manpower 
to measure performance and speed up service delivery, critical to demanding more from public servants was the need to improve their working conditions and remuneration. My government has now put in place a compensation package for public servants that recognizes the skills required and the weight of responsibilities of the differing roles and is moving rapidly to improve the working environment of staff. My government has uplifted the pension of public servants employed by Turks and Caicos government before 1992, recognizing that value has been eroded by inflation. My government has also announced the launch of a financial assistance program for needy seniors over 70 years old. This is expected to take effect in April 2024. My government will use moral suasion to encourage the private sector to move towards a better and more equitable pay system for certain categories of workers. Bearing in mind our achievements, I am humbled by the patience and the forbearance of those who have not yet fully felt the benefits of this buoyant economy. I want to assure you that this government has your best interest at heart and is working as seriously to ensure that your needs are met and that opportunities are in place for you to survive and thrive right here in the TCI. It is not possible in this message to recount all that my government has done over the last year, let alone over the last 34 months. Therefore, I will deliver a more comprehensive account of the stewardship of my government at the State of the State Address in February 2024, God willing. An abridged list of accomplishments over the past year includes the following. Setting up of the Informal Settlements Unit, Grand Turk Enhancement and Sustainability Agency, Progress on Constitutional Amendments with the United Kingdom Government, Progress on several priority projects, including the South Dock Port Development, Linking the Islands by Fiber Optic Connectivity, and the National ID. The Housing Policy launched and establishment of the Housing Department, consolidation of immigration and customs to include one border force, implementation of the social enrichment programs, including daycare and after-school programs, progression of plans and initiatives toward the Howard Hamilton International Airport development, digitization of police records, launch of the Destination Management and Marketing Organization, Experience Trucks and Caicos, Debt forgiveness of the former Tolco and Invest TCI loans portfolio, a new residential Crown Land policy and amnesty program. These boxes could not be ticked except for the dedications of the working teams among ministries, departments, and agencies who toil to effectuate policy and execute the government's vision. Thank you. As I turn Towards 2024, my government will work to accelerate the delivery of yet unrealized promises in the citizen's contract, many of which are at various stages in the pipeline. Additionally, in light of changing circumstances, there will be a reprioritizing of government's objectives, which may result in swapping some projects for others that may be more critical. My government will focus particularly on housing, the environment, community renewal, operationalizing the credit union, agriculture and fisheries, MSME with linkages to tourism, road and infrastructure improvements, and government office accommodations, etc. Step by step, block by block, we are committed to building a stronger, safer community. So, it would be remiss of me not to mention that we are deeply concerned and feel the pulse of the nation when it comes to the recent uptick in violent crimes and gun-related incidences. 
The communities of the Turks and Caicos can remember a time when petty crimes such as disorderly conduct, public intoxication, vandalism, and theft made up the bulk of the matters to be policed and handled by the court. As a former police officer, I have genuine empathy towards the police and officers working in areas such as border services. The varied issues and challenges that they are confronted with daily are cause for alarm. Many factors make up a country a good place to live. Safety, law, and order rank high on any quality of life index. My government will continue to resource the police force and other complementary agencies and will encourage partnerships with public safety personnel. We call on residents to be vigilant, prepared, and organized as we tackle crime together. We strive for a country that is safe and affords a high quality of life and prosperity for all. There's so much to do, be, and become in the Turks and Caicos Islands for those who would seize the opportunities that my government is creating. Your role is to position yourself for the ongoing shift in economic opportunities. I implore us in 2024 to think big, even if we have to start small. This is the best time to awaken our entrepreneurial spirit, to be ambitious and to take risk. This is as good a time as ever to strive for excellence. And if excellence is further away from our reach, it is enough to strive for continuous improvement. This is as good a time as ever to upskill, to take on a new hobby and to monetize it. This is as good a time as ever to find a niche and to consistently work it into a successful venture. The new year always ushers the belief that it is as good a time as ever to change or become more adaptable to change. Looking back over the past three years, I am reminded of my inaugural conversation with you as Premier of the East Turks and Caicos Island. I promised to be a transformational leader. Transformation connotes change. I did not promise you a smooth ride or harmony all of the time, but I promise you an environment where creative friction would be stimulated and where there will be progress. Today, I reiterate the promise to listen, to be empathetic, to be supportive, transparent, and accountable. I promise that every decision made in cabinet and every decision made in the House of Assembly that affects every one of us will be for the greater good of the Turks and Caicos Islands. To all residents of the Turks and Caicos Islands, I say thank you for your commitment to the growth and development of this country and I encourage you to become a part of the change you want to see. I end as I began with a hymn authored by Lawrence Tutiet. Father, let me dedicate all this air to thee in whatever worldly state thou wilt have me be. Not from sorrow, pain, or care, freedom dare I claim. This alone shall be my prayer Glorify thy name on behalf of my government, my lovely wife and family, I wish you and all you hold there a bright and prosperous new year. May it be filled with joy, peace, security, prosperity, and good health. Happy New Year, Turks and Caicos. God bless you.